So I'll tell you what I find fascinating about the, um, the old Soviet rangefinders. When, um, when Oscar Barnack designed the original Leica back in the 1930s, he knew that whatever he designed would be built and assembled in a German factory by highly trained, skilled German technicians who cared about their work and wanted to get it right. The people who designed this camera could not make the same assumption. This is a Fed 2. It is the first Soviet improvement, if you will, on the original uh, Leica design. Uh, the predecessors to this camera were all copies of the 1930s era um, Barnack style Leicas. Uh, this one was, um, it, well, it is an upgrade. I mean, it, it definitely is. Um, and it was done well. And, um, and I really admire the people who designed it because they had to put together, they had to sketch out something that could survive the manufacturing process of a Soviet factory. And that's really the issue with Soviet rangefinders. They tend to be well designed. The problem's not that. The problem is sample variation and quality control at the factory, which was virtually non-existent. I forgot who said it, but there's a famous line by, I think it's a Russian author, I don't know who, um, who said um, about the Soviet Union, they pretend to pay us and we pretend to work. Um, and and that, that was sort of you know, the, the old joke about the Soviet work ethic. Um, and it was, you know, sadly fairly true. Um, quality control was virtually non-existent um, in Soviet factories, which, who, which were uh, obsessed with, um, uh, with meeting production goals in accordance with, you know, whatever committee had authority in, 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 uh, you know, over their industry. Um, but not to digress on that. So the issue for me is, you know, my, my theme with these videos is, um, is getting into 35 millimeter for a bargain price. You know, what's, what's, uh, what's the good equipment you can get that's really inexpensive? And when it comes to range finders, there are really no bargain range finder systems left. Um, 10 or 15 years ago, I would have said a Canon P and Canon range finders, um, but those have gone up in price. You cannot find a, a, a fixable Canon rangefinder for under $100, and a restored or a uh, or something in really nice shape is going to get you closer to two or, or 200 bucks or over, um, sometimes significantly over. And the people who know how to fix them are well, they're just they're not working anymore. They're retired. They're they're, off, they're out of the scene. Um, so in terms of getting a good bang for your buck. These feds, this, this is a Fed 2. It's personally, it's my favorite of the Soviet uh, rangefinders. Um, uh, I, I don't want to go into detail in this particular video. I just want to give an overview. Um, but this is one of the rangefinders you can find for about $100 in nice condition. Um, the issue then is, well, what kind of lenses can you get? And there are a number of very good lenses. Uh, that's one of the attractions of the Soviet system. They did make excellent lenses. Uh, they were based on, uh, almost entirely based upon pre-war Leica and Zeiss designs. And um, uh, there's some nice stuff out there. This Elmar copy uh, is a nice lens. It's sharp as a tack. I've uh, shot a couple rolls of film with this thing. Um, and it's a really, really nice lens. Um, very happy with it. Highly recommend it. And these things go for, I don't know, $50, $50 maybe, $70, maybe $75. Um, but under $100 certainly cheaper than the Leica alternative. Um, and you've also got, you've got the uh, Jupiter 12, which is 35 millimeter focal length and is a copy of, if I, if I recall correctly, the Zeiss, either Biagon or Biatar. Somebody will correct me. I want to say Biagon, but that might be Biatar. I can't remember. Um, and this is considered a very, uh, very nice 35 millimeter focal length lens. Um, and these can be had for a little over $100 in nice condition. Um, again, I'm talking about the U.S. market. In fact, I'm talking specifically about one source on the, on the U.S. market that I'll, I'll talk about in a second. Um, Indostar, these are cheap. Sharp as attack, four element, Tessar design, um, really sharp lens. And... Um, Again, inexpensive, maybe fifty dollars for a nice one. Uh, the well, my personal favorite is the uh, the Jupiter Eight. Jupiter Eights, I think, are underrated. It's a Sonar formula, fifty millimeter f two. 
uh, and I am absolutely pleased as punch with the results I get from this lens. It's really, really nice. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Sonar fan. I like the Sonar look. I like the, um, I like the rendering you get from the old Sonar lenses, and, um, and, and this, this gives you really nice results for a very good price. Uh, these things can be had for around, I want to say, $75 maybe, in really nice shape. Um, then you come to the Jupiter 3, which is uh, the, a, also a Sonar clone. Uh, 50 millimeter f1.5. For some reason, these things have shot up in value. I mean, I bought this thing 10 or 15 years ago, um, and if I were collecting today, I would not buy one. I mean, they're they're going for over 250 dollars. Um, I do not know what accounts for that. Um, I suspect there's some. I mean, somebody made this thing popular. I don't know who. And it's not a bad lens. It's, it's a great lens. I mean, it's an awesome lens. But I, I I don't think it's worth 250 dollars. Not when you can get the Jupiter 8 for 75 bucks. Um, but again, this is a, that's a very nice 50 millimeter lens. Um, and I also have the Jupiter 9 uh, portrait lens. This is also a copy of the uh, pre-war Zeiss Sonar. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a Sonar, Zeiss Sonar copy. Um, again, very well known, very well thought of, highly regarded lens. But they're not cheap. Uh, today, these things are going for, you know, between $250 to $300 uh, for a nice copy. So, um... The bargains in Soviet lenses, well, there is one other bargain that I do not own. It's the Jupiter 11, which is the 135 millimeter focal length, uh, and those can be had for about 100 bucks in nice condition. So for a bargain in Soviet um, rangefinders, I'd recommend a Fed 2, um, the Elmar clone 53.5 is nice, the, uh, my personal favorite, Jupiter 8. If you're going to collect Soviet rangefinders, get you a Jupiter 8. Uh, in my opinion, that's the best deal going um, for uh, normal focal length Soviet lenses. And the, um, and the 135 is also, uh, is also a decent price. So here's another issue with these Soviet lenses. Um, I also have a nice collection of Canon rangefinders. At least I have, I have a few rangefinders. Here's a Canon P. So I've been using the, um, the Jupiter 8 on the Canon P and, and um, another Canon rangefinder I have with good results, uh, and with, with perfectly good results, and no problems, no compatibility issues whatsoever. Um, the, uh, the Soviet, this, this particular Soviet rangefinder is based on the, um, the Leica um, screw mount, also known as uh, M39 uh, mount. Um, and um, they are interchangeable to a degree. There is a focus compatibility issue, or at least I had read about a focus compatibility issue with uh, Soviet lenses. Um, and I recently, or not too long ago, tested that theory with this lens on this camera. So if there's any discrepancy in focusing, you would expect it to be magnified at a telephoto focal length uh, at wide open aperture. And so that's what I did. I shot some, uh, some figure studies at, uh, at, at open aperture, um, this lens on this camera, and the point of focus was about Eh, maybe five centimeters behind the model. Um, you know, I was focusing on her eyes and I got her shoulder. Uh, and, and I took, you know, like half a roll of, of, of shots with this thing. So, I mean, it was, I mean, I, I, I got consistent results. There, were, there was consistently bad focus. Um, there is only one place online I know of that discusses the, the focus compatibility issue of the Soviet rangefinder lenses written by a gentleman named Dante Stella, or at least that's his on, online name. Uh, I'll link to, to, to the relevant webpage down below. That, that webpage is at least 15 years old, so if the link is dead by the time you see it, I apologize. But he does discuss the focus compatibility, compatibility issues between the Soviet lenses and the um, Japanese cameras. And um, what he talks about has been borne out in my experience. That is, he says that the, um, uh, that the Jupiter 9 and the Jupiter 3, uh, at wide, certainly the Jupiter 3 at wide open aperture is going to have focus compatibility issues. I haven't tested the Jupiter 3 on the, uh, on the Canon, um, but the Jupiter 9 I have, and I, I got the results that, um, which were consistent with, um, uh, with what this gentleman had to say. So the, the, the only real bargain system in rangefinders, I think, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, is the Soviet Kiev line. This, this, the, the Leica copies were, were marketed as under the Fed name. 
and also the Zorki name, Z-O-R-K-I, Zorki. Um, there was another line of rangefinders produced in the Soviet Union called Kiev, K-I-E-V, um, which were based on the contacts. In fact, the early Kievs were actually built on contacts machinery, which was seized from Germany following the war. So it's got some, some interesting history behind it. Um, those tend to be cheaper than the Leica um, copies, and the lenses are cheaper than the Leica copy lenses. And it's essentially the same variety of lenses. It's basically the same lens choice you've got. There's one additional one, the, the Helios 103, that I'm not real familiar with, never shot one. Um, I've heard good things about it. But um, that's really, as, as far as I know, the only real bargain rangefinder system out there. Um, Canon, you know, used to be, not anymore. Um, and of, of, the, of the Soviet Leica copies, you got two of their nicest lenses are just, you know, way over. Well, I mean, whether or not they're overpriced is a matter of personal opinion, but they do sell for between $250 and $300, which does not qualify them, in my opinion, as a bargain. Um, I may do some more videos on rangefinders, uh, the, uh, the Soviets and the, and the Canon. There are, I mean, you can find some decent deals on, like every, on a Canon. Every once in a while, you'll see a Canon P at a good price. Um, but make sure it's been serviced. Make sure it's in good condition. These things are from the 1950s. Um, and the key to getting a good uh, rangefinder is, is, getting a trust, is, is buying from a trusted seller. Um, Canons are probably easier to repair, or that is, it's probably easier to find a tech who knows how to repair a Canon or who has experience in repairing a Canon. Well, no, I say that as an American, but you know, if you live in Europe, that, that may not be true. It may be easier to find a tech who, who's familiar with Soviet equipment. So, all right, I take that back. Um, so the key to buying good Soviet equipment is, is getting a good supplier. And everything that I've shown you here, I have bought from one place in New York. It's fedka.com, F-E-D-K-A.com. It's run by a gentleman named Yuri. I do not know Yuri. I have no, ex no relationship with him. I bought from him. Um, I may have exchanged emails regarding a purchase, but that's it. Uh, but he runs a good, clean, honest business. And his grading is accurate. He doesn't sell junk. If he says the camera is in great condition and it's working, then, then that's what it is. Um, and when you're buying the Soviet stuff, buying from a trusted seller is key because of sample variation and quality control issues. So, um, oh, one thing, one more thing I want to mention. If you happen to find yourself one of these things in, a good, in good condition, this is a, um, 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 a rotary viewfinder, accessory viewfinder. It'll, it'll clip onto any rangefinder. Uh, I mean, it is Soviet, uh, but it will clip onto any rangefinder, and it's got viewing ports for, God, is it marked in centimeters? So that's 13.5, uh, uh, oh, so that's 135 millimeter. 50 millimeter, uh, 28 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 85 millimeter. Okay, and it just turns right around. Um, this is a nice piece of equipment. It is not junk. It is well made, well put together, um, and I highly recommend it if you find one. You can put this on any rangefinder. I mean, you can put it on any camera. It's got a, you know, it's got a standard mount, um, but it's useful on any rangefinder. So highly recommend this. Um, but otherwise. Uh, buy from a trusted seller, and um, I understand there there are I think there are a couple of um, of uh, uh, sellers in Ukraine that have developed a good reputation. I don't know them personally. I don't I haven't bought from them, um, but um, I'll uh, I will probably do some more videos on rangefinders at some point down the road. But they're just not the great value that they used to be. Um, but they are fun, and um, and they are they do they do share some interesting qualities. I mean th this thing is. It's not a big camera. I, I've used a wrist strap on it, not a neck strap. Um, I can, uh, I can, you can fit this in your pocket. It ain't light, but it will fit in the pocket, especially with the uh, with the collapsible lens. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so I just wanted to give you some general thoughts on rangefinders in general, bargain rangefinders, and Soviet rangefinders. Um, I will follow up with other videos. At some point down the road, right now I'm kind of focusing on uh, Konica, uh, but um, um, I'll, I'll get around to these two. All right, those are my thoughts for the day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it at all useful, please do subscribe and check out the links below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.